In this video, I want to talk about making adjustments to your image. Now, there are a few different ways you can technically make official adjustments, and that is with adjustment layers, which you can access through the adjustments panel. Also, you can create uh, adjustments directly on a layer itself in a destructive manner by going under image and choosing adjustments. Now several of the same things are available between this menu and the actual adjustment layers. The primary difference is that a layer is non-destructive. You can add the layer, you can remove the layer and go back to your original image. You can adjust the transparency of an adjustment layer. You can constrain it using a mask. There's all kinds of things you can do with a layer, including change the settings of the adjustment itself so that you can you know, make it more vibrant or less vibrant later on down the road. Once you you create an adjustment using the image menu and going down to adjustments, it's for keeps. It's just something that is applied directly to that layer and you cannot go back and make any adjustments to it. Also, there are a few further adjustments that are not available as layers, and I'll just mention them. We will not be going over them in this video. They include shadows highlights, HDR toning, variations, desaturate, match color, replace color, and equalize. Everything north of these are already included in your adjustment layers. Now, nine times out of ten, I would recommend that you use an adjustment layer if you can. However, occasionally you will run into a situation where the nature of a layer makes it problematic, and so you will have to add an adjustment directly to a layer itself. However, we're going to focus primarily on the layers. Now, there are two ways to add adjustment layers to your document, or two easy ways. There's actually a few ways to go about it. We can go into the layer menu and go down to new adjustment layer, which is very cool, but I don't ever, ever, ever do this. Uh, most of the time, I find myself coming under the adjustment layers button, which is located here in the layers panel. That is because I've been doing it that way for years. As of more recent editions of Photoshop, such as CS4 and CS5, we have the adjustments panel. What this does is this gives you kind of a browser-like panel that allows you to not only add on adjustment layers, but to edit them and make changes to them and cycle through presets straight out of the gate. Now, let's talk a little bit about the adjustment layers themselves. Technically, it's not just adjustment layers. If you want to get hardcore about it, there are fill and adjustment layers. The fill layers are the three layers located up here at the top. We have solid color, gradient and pattern. And I want to go over those real quick and get them out of the way. Solid color is just going to allow you to add a sheet of solid color to your document, just as the name suggests. And we can see that here. It's just a solid color that we can double click on, change the color of it any time. It seems really plain. In fact, it might even seem a little boring, but it's actually extremely powerful when you combine it with a mask. And that's something we'll actually explore a little bit later on down the road. The next fill layer is the gradient layer, and this is just going to add a simple gradient that fills in your entire document by default, like so. So there's a nice little Insta rainbow. Now I do want to mention, you see these when I create them, they're automatically filling in the document. They don't necessarily have to do that. If you have a selection, so if I come in here and I draw the most amazing selection ever with the lasso tool, which I just clicked on that over here in the tools panel. With this selection in place, if I was to create now a pattern layer, you'll notice that that pattern gets added only within that selection and that my mask is defined by whatever I had selected. Just keeping that in mind, uh, you have a really powerful means to add an adjustment specifically to one area. Now the reason I went ahead and got the fill layers out of the way is that the fill layers aren't really included in the adjustments panel. All of the other layers are. So if you need to create a solid color, a gradient, or a pattern, you'll have to do it here or up through the menu where you can go under layer and choose new adjustment layer. Actually, excuse me, the fill layers aren't in there. They're there on menu. So fill layers with solid color, uh, gradient, and pattern right up here. So sticking to the adjustments panel, let's give a quick rundown of this panel. You'll notice that the adjustments are broken into three different groups. And basically what you're looking at is a series of tonal adjustments at the very top, including brightness contrast, levels, curves, and exposure. These will adjust the overall tone. For instance, if I drop a brightness contrast on this, you'll notice my adjustments panel does update. This is a context sensitive panel. If I click on my background layer, it goes back to where it was a second ago. If I click on an existing adjustment layer, the panel updates to show the settings for that adjustment layer. So I can increase the brightness, I can decrease the brightness, and I can muck with the contrast as well. 
Now, I'm not here to go over each and every individual one of these adjustment layers. I'm just here to give you a general idea of what they're here for. And then you can start from there as kind of a foundation and build up and learn more about each individual adjustment layer moving forward. So again, this top row is all about tonal adjustment. The next layer is about color adjustment. We have vibrance, hue saturation, color balance, black and white, photo filter, and channel mixer. So just as a random example, let's grab the black and white adjustment layer, and this is going to give you a series of sliders allowing you to control each individual color channel's push toward black and white. Now we know this chrysanthemum image has a lot of red in it, so if I slide the red channel over toward white, most of the image turns white. If I slide it down toward black, most of the image turns black. There's probably a, quite a bit of yellow in here as well, and you'll notice as I slide the yellows toward black, any pixels that had any kind of yellow to them are being pushed toward black. Probably not much by way of green, so as I, I mess with green, nothing's really happening, except maybe a couple of pixels here and there. Probably not much by way of cyan either. I'm sure we're not going to see much by way of blue, and maybe a little bit of magenta here and there, and you can see that right in the dead center of the flower. Now, there are other settings as well, but again, I'm not necessarily here to go over each and every one of those. Let's go ahead and throw this away. It's just a way to change the color. So again, at the very top, you have tonal adjustments. Underneath that, you have color adjustments. And then finally, we have a series of special effects, really. So we can invert. So here's just a simple inversion, which has no options. Really, it just takes whatever is there and flips the colors around to their exact opposites. Or as another example, we have the gradient map which if we drop this down, all this is going to do is create a gradient such that the darkest colors of the image, all of the blacks, are mapped to the far left of the gradient and all the whites are mapped to the far white. So as a fun little example, if you just click a simple black to white gradient, you have a really simple black and white image. Then you can maybe drop a flag right in the middle of this, put any color of the rainbow on it, and you've just colorized the mid-tones. So it's kind of like making a, a duotone. So, that is a quick look at the types of adjustments available. Now let's take a look at the interface for the adjustments panel. I mean, granted, we've already gone through the upper half of it because we have all of these different buttons, and really the big thing I want you to pull from here are the categories. Tonal adjustments, color adjustments, and special effects. And down from here we have a list of presets for all of these different adjustments. So let me go ahead and throw away my gradient map. We don't necessarily need that several, actually most, of these adjustments have some sort of preset that is already that comes along with it by default. So for example, I could go under the, uh, not the exposure presets, Let's see, how about, I'll find one that I really want to use. Curves has one. We can use a color negative preset, and that automatically drops down the result of a negative color. Now, these are not special adjustments in their own right. As a matter of fact, really, all these are, are just the adjustments themselves with some settings that have been pre-configured, literally just a preset. So if I go under Hue Saturation, here's a cyanotype preset. That is not a cyanotype layer. That is a Hue Saturation layer with settings set to preset of cyanotype. Now, if you don't want to do that, if uh, for some reason you just like creating one yourself, you could, for example, just drop on a hue saturation, and then there's always a list of presets at the top of each one, and they're cyanotype, so you get exactly the same thing. And all it's doing is pushing the hue toward a specific color, bleeding back the saturation, and there you go. Let's go ahead and throw that away, and let's talk a little bit more about the interface for the uh, adjustments panel. We can expand and contract the adjustments panel, which doesn't seem like it'd really be all that important, but it kind of is. If you start playing with certain adjustments, particularly the levels and curves, which as you adjust their settings, they have a visible histogram. By making this bigger, you have a much wider range on the histogram, which can be nice when you're having to do things like adjust output curves. So just kind of food for thought, if you're thinking, why would I ever want to make that bigger or smaller? It's really just so that if you have a little window like this that requires specific feedback, it's a little easier for you to update. If you're thinking that all you needed to do was just expand this out, you'll notice that's not necessarily the case. It doesn't really have anything to do with the width that you drag it out. It really does have a larger and a smaller setting.
Now, if we back up one, and actually let me jump back into my layers for just a moment, and oh, let me expand this, expand this. Oh, it doesn't want to expand both. That is just one of the things of having so little screen space. If I have my adjustments expanded like that, I cannot also open up my layers. Photoshop gets mad at me and says, no, you have to have one or the other. So I will be keeping things relatively small while I work. Now, the other button we have here at the base level allows us to basically turn any new adjustment layer into a clipping layer. Now, right out of the gate, that's not going to look like anything special. It's going to be pretty tricky to tell what's going on. So to show it off, I'm going to do something a little bit fancy. I'm going to go to File and drop down to Place. And let's bring in our jellyfish. Jellyfish is a great little file for this sort of thing. And we'll leave it as a smart object just just to show that we can in, in these later versions of Photoshop. And I'm going to drop on a clipping mask. I'm sorry, not a clipping mask, a layer mask. Pardon me. And it's all white by default. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me undo that. Control Z. I'm doing this totally on the fly off the top of my head. Uh, let's instead go to Select and choose Color Range. And I want to grab all of these shades of blue. So hold down Shift and just drag all through the water. Do not touch the actual jellyfish. I'm going to get the corner and get here around his tentacles. And let's actually set everything over to grayscale. So I'm going to take the selection preview and set that to grayscale. And that will allow me to really see that I, I'm getting all these little spots nearby the tentacles. Now when I'm done, I'll click OK. I'll drop this on as a mask. And then immediately, I'm going to jump over to my masks panel, and I'm going to invert that. So now I have a jellyfish floating on top of my chrysanthemum. Now, why would I go through that much trouble? Well, partially so I could do something really fancy that has nothing to do with the lesson. I could double-click over here and put down a drop shadow. Don't worry about how I did that. That's something I'll cover in a later video. Actually, if you really want to know, you can just select your layer and come over here and choose Drop Shadow. And that puts it down. I just did that to make it stand out a little more. Okay, the real reason I wanted to show that off is this button. I'll come all the way back around, full 360, to New Adjustments Affect All Layers Below. What this means is all of the new adjustment layers are going to be a clipping layer for whatever's directly beneath them. So let's do something really kind of off the wall. Like, we'll do a gradient map but I'm going to make sure that this button is clicked before I do. Now, I click Gradient Map, and notice the Gradient Map is only affecting the jellyfish. It's not touching the chrysanthemum at all. Also notice that it is a clipping mask. It is indented, and it has this little arrow pointing down to the jellyfish itself. That's why I wanted to go ahead and get the jellyfish in here, so you can see how this adjustment layer is only affecting this one object. So if I come in here and do a standard black and white, and then maybe grab the central color and make it some put your eyes out shade of pink I now have a pink jellyfish floating over a bright red chrysanthemum with little to no effort and that is because this gradient map has been constrained to only follow the visibility of my clipping mask or I'm sorry my base of the clipping mask being the jellyfish layer okay so let's throw that away and you can see now what that button does. Let's go ahead and switch that off. I'll also just switch off my jellyfish. We don't necessarily need him there anymore. And we can start talking about the interface for the adjustments panel in terms of having an adjustment handy, because it does change a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop on just something random. It doesn't really matter which one I grab. Let's do uh, posterize. And this just allows you to control the number of colors that are being output. So here's the effect of two colors. Now that doesn't include black, obviously, and it's kind of pushing itself in some of these corners. But I set that to, say, five. And you get kind of like this old school computer graphic rendition of what it is you're looking at. Now, with this selected, you'll notice the bottom bar of our adjustments panel has completely changed. First off, we have a back button. This uh, says return to adjustment list. This just takes you to the first page. That's how this is kind of like a browser. It allows you to jump into whatever adjustment layer you have selected as well as back to the home, uh, the home view if you need to. And I just call it the home view. It's kind of like the initial page of the adjustment panel. Next, we have this adjustment layer affects all layers below or click to clip to layer. So if I turn this on, so I just turned my jellyfish on. Actually, bear with me just a minute. The, the posterize is cool, but let's, let's use a different one. Uh, let's grab gradient map, and let's make a really obvious gradient. So black and white is, of course, pretty fancy. I just love throwing some other color in there in the middle just to make stuff look cool. So there's sort of a strange night vision effect. 
Now, check this out. If I check this button, this turns, uh, all this is, is converting this to a clipping layer. It's got a fancy name. The fancy tooltip says, this adjustment clips to the layer. Click to affect all layers below. All this is, is do you want this to be a clipping layer? Yes or no. That's all it is. Next, we have toggle layer visibility. I mean, you could just as easily click here, but I guess if you've got your layers all collapsed, then it is kind of nice, but generally I don't. So it's either click here or click there. It's just whatever works best for you. Next, we have press to view previous state. So if you've made any significant changes, you can kind of toggle back to any previous states that you've been working with. You can also reset this to how it was when you first brought it in. So by clicking this little reset button, we've gone back to having that really boring sort of dark blue and dark blue uh, gradient, which I'll now switch back over to my cooler, uh, my much cooler uh, night vision style gradient, which was just awesome. And see, so if I click and hold this down, you see I'm going back to that original state. So just so you see how that works, it's just a way to, for you to compare and see if what you changed really was an improvement. So does my night vision, super green, glowy alien jellyfish look cooler than the dark blue, boring jellyfish? Yes, it does. So we can move on. Next, if you want, you've got a trash button that allows you to destroy out an adjustment layer that is sitting there. So if we're done with this layer, we don't think we'll ever need it again. We can just click and make it go bye-bye. So there's a breakdown of the adjustments panel. I highly recommend you take some time and play with these. Uh, remember that every adjustment layer you bring in, by default, even if you're not using this clipping mask button, is going to come along with all of the power of masking. So uh, let me grab something that's uh, a little bit obvious. I'm just going to fall back on uh, black and white just because it's really easy to see. We had so many colors and now we have practically none. And I'll pull my reds down just a little bit, pull my yellows up just a little bit for some really weird contrast. I just want to mention uh, that you can do all kinds of interesting things with your adjustment layers by doing stuff like adjusting their opacity. So you can bleed down how much that black and white effect is being controlled. You can do other things too. You can actually control their blend mode and get some really off the wall effects. So here, here we are adjusting or uh, adding a black and white adjustment layer, but it's set to lighten. And so it's not entirely pushing everything to black and white. It's just doing a really high key desaturation. So play with these and really get in and experiment and see the kind of combinations you can come up with. The great thing about adjustment layers is they're totally non-destructive. So if you end up with something you don't like, then the worst case is you just go delete the layer and you're good to go. Also, remember the mask. You can do all kinds of things with masks. For instance, if I grab my paintbrush, and currently my entire mask is white, I can paint a black stroke here. And now that black and white effect is not affecting wherever it is I'm painting, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have other tools as well, like you could grab a gradient and drop a gradient across the whole thing so that now we have black and white in one corner and full color in the other corner. And it's just a nice fade from one end to the other. All kinds of ways you can apply this. And I, I highly recommend you to get in here and play with these and really see how they work. So that is a look at adjustment layers. Also, just one more time as a reminder, you can go under image adjustments. And these are all available except for the last seven or so. Everything we've talked about so far is available to be applied directly to a layer, but it's not a non-destructive thing. That will destroy the image, meaning it will make a permanent change where adjustment layers can be switched on, switched off at any given time. So that will wrap things up for this lecture. Thank you very much.